So this is my first video back uh, since I've been consulting Ontario for three months. I've actually been on the farm for about 20 days, just kind of going through stuff and really just uh, waiting for the snow to melt. I'm getting to the point now that uh, snow is melting and production is about to start. Uh, tomorrow we're actually going to be doing uh, 160 wood chip bags in our sterilizer uh, as well as 30 bags of grain and we actually already have uh, 120 or so bags of grain spawn that uh, we've done uh, two weeks ago. So already uh, probably about a month ahead in our production this year and we're off to a great start. So I was actually talking to uh, Jay Schindler at Fungi for the People and I told him during my consultation with Brad Coons at Top Shelf Mushrooms, we were developing uh, a unique, efficient uh, grain spawn process. And I was really excited to share with Jay because he was actually uh, my mentor in 2012. And I always want to have something to contribute to him because uh, he has really been a big help to where I am today. So what we're talking about here is super pasteurization of grain spawn. What that means is 100 degrees Celsius or 212 Fahrenheit for all you Americans. Uh, and we actually pasteurize our grain for 15 hours. We don't use pressure. Uh, so what that means is the temperature, temperature doesn't get as hot. So we have to use more time to actually uh, sterilize our grain. Uh, and to make this efficient, we developed a bucket system where the grain is soaking in these buckets. So very quickly, I'll just go over the design of the bucket. Very simple. We just have holes in the bottom. I actually have this screen, which I can actually pop out here. This is just like a really nice mesh screen that we can wash. That just fits right in the bottom. And then this bucket, uh, we're gonna fill just over half full with dry grain. Uh, I'm gonna fill this tote uh, completely uh, with these buckets and then we're just going to fill it with water. Really simple. Uh, the water is going to hydrate uh, right right through the bucket and uh, what, what another important thing is is that I used to fill these bins up uh, with about 200 pounds of grain and then I had to get in there with a shovel uh, and mix it quite a lot with the water because otherwise the water actually wouldn't uh, fully hydrate in sections of the grain and what the reason for that is is we're actually getting compression and uh, the water actually couldn't get in into sections. So by actually uh, putting uh, grain in these buckets, we're avoiding compression. So we can actually, if we want, I can get a bigger tote, we can stack the buckets up, fill more grain um, with these totes, uh, but we're actually not gonna get the compression issue. And like I said, we're just letting the water do the work. And to me, that is what it's all about. There's no rinsing, we don't even add gypsum anymore. So I actually filled this tote with grain uh, yesterday, probably around 11 a.m. or so. Uh, it's actually 11 o'clock at night the following day. And what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of hydrated lime into the mix and we're gonna use a sub pump and we're gonna agitate the water and mix all the lime in and get a really nice consistency. So the reason why we add hydrated lime is we're looking to actually raise the pH of the water. Because we're soaking the grain uh, for so long, uh, bacteria is actually going to eventually start thriving in this environment as the grain starts to ferment. So by day two, we add the hydrated lime, and that's actually going to kill off a very acceptable, acceptable amount of bacteria so that when we actually sterilize the grain, uh, there really isn't anything living on the grain and we're just looking to finish off killing everything so that we're left with something that we can inoculate with and hopefully grow only mushroom mycelium because as all of you may, may or may not know mold is the worst enemy for mushroom cultivation so for today uh, today is day two of the soak uh, this is when we add the hydrated lime so like I said we have a sub pump I'm just gonna add the hydrated lime and the pump's gonna do the work You know, I, lo I love how efficient, I love how hands-off uh, this really is. Uh, we're going to let this sub pump mix for probably about 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, and then this grain is going to sit in hydrated lime water. It's probably about 0.5 to maybe 1%. Uh, very diluted, but the consistency is going to be great. Uh, by around 12 hours from now, probably around 10, 11 o'clock in the morning, 
Uh, I'm actually going to take these buckets out and just put them in another tote that has a hole in the bottom. They're just going to drip dry for about five to six hours. And then uh, we're actually going to bag these up uh, mid-afternoon and they're going to go into the batch with our wood chips. We're going to sterilize these and knock them up uh, the following day. Now, one of the most interesting things Brad and I have discovered is that uh, the cool down uh, when your grain is finished actually happens to be one of the more important uh, factors in the entire process. So after uh, we've sterilized our bags of grain for 15 hours, uh, if we leave the lids on, even for 12 or 24 hours, what you're actually going to hap what, what's going to start happening is there's going to be pockets of air in the sterilizer that are colder than the bags. And moisture is actually going to want to attract on the cold interface of the bag and we're actually going to start getting pooling of water. Now what this means is, is that there's going to be areas in the bag that are wetter than they should be and then that actually causes the grain to swell and in some cases uh, smush and then the inside of the grain uh, can actually release bacteria in the bag. So this is a problem that I've had for a couple years and I actually used to think it was a uh, lime sludge and I was rinsing the grain uh, heavily to try to get all the lime off the grain. But what I actually didn't realize was that these grain kernels uh, were, were rehydrating uh, and actually smushing in some cases. Now another factor we, we actually noticed is that if the, the grain bags uh, touch the side of the sterilizer during the 15 hour process, uh, the grain kernels can actually burst. And again, this process can release bacteria into your bags. So two, two of the, the main factors that were by far the best, uh, the best research that we, we realized is that you do not want your grain bags during your sterilization process to touch uh, the outer uh, or the inside of your uh, sterilization unit. And you do not want water to pool. So to prevent this, uh, after sterilization is done, we actually pop the lid right away. And what that does is that allows an even cool down and you rush in all this cold air and the bags cool evenly and fast within about 12 hours. Another thing I should point out is that we're actually pre-sealing our bags before sterilization and we can get away with this because we're actually not pressurizing our sterilization units so the bags are never going to burst. So even though we're popping the lid right away after sterilization, the bags are sealed. Uh, we're not actually uh, forcing any air in because the unit was never pressurized. So the, the bags actually don't contaminate. Uh, they're perfectly moist but dry and everything has been uh, evenly cool down so the moisture is even throughout and that to me has been uh, the key for making perfect grain spawn. Well I hope you found this helpful. Uh, if you're looking for more education check out our website at wtfmushrooms.com. We're offering a course called the mentorship which is hands-on one-on-one learning for students looking uh, who already have experience in mushroom cultivation but they're looking to start a business and take their life in control. And this year, I really just want to get a lot of people on the farm. I want to get a lot of diversity and I want to learn from you. I want to teach you how to grow more mushrooms. We'll talk to you soon.